Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. My name is Edson Naomi and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, making a fly-through cutscene to a level kind of like uh, Super Mario 64's intro. Uh, so here on screen I have a demo of it ready to go. So if I just walk through the trigger, yeah, it makes a fly-through, which is pretty cool. I'm going to show you how to make this from the ground up. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Now here we have a basic scene going. It's currently using assets from the modular sci-fi office, uh, which is completely free for the month of this recording. So you can go down to that if you want. Then we just have a simple uh, third person blueprint. Um, now the first thing you want to do is go to the top left, click cinematics, and then you want to add a level sequence. Now you can call this anything. I'm gonna call this cutscene. Okay, boom, now it's going to open a sequencer. Now this kind of works like any 3D program in the way where you can keyframe changes with the camera. So firstly, I'm going to set the FPS to about 60. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want. Then you want to position the camera where you'd like the animation of the camera to like start or begin. And then you'll see this camera icon next to the search icon. It's named it's create a new camera so as a current camera cut. Just click that. Um, and now you'll see a camera which is kind of has a low FOV. So this current focal length, I'll change it to something like 12, which looks more natural. And the thing is, we should keyframe everything we're doing now. So just press the circle icon at all the camera components and the transform at the spawn. And now we've keyframed it. So what's awesome is you can just move your camera to anywhere where you'd like it to move to. And then rotate it to anywhere where you'd like. And then you can, oh yeah, sorry, you have to move the track ahead before you do that. So you can move anywhere in the timeline, and then you can create a keyframe there. So about here, I'm going to move the camera here, and then you can just click the transforms keyframe, and then you can move along the timeline. Then you can move the camera again, just hit uh, the keyframe button, and then you can just go to this in the timeline. Just create a new keyframe at the transform and then you can just move the pen over to the end and then you can just move about here and then keyframe. So you can press space to play over your animation. I like how fluid it kind of is. Uh, now that you have your animation going, um, first important thing to know is when you're gonna um, be off the camera so that means you're not going to be in the sequencer tab you might wonder okay how do i get back to that camera so you open the cinematics open the cutscene and what you could do is you can go to this camera cut and then you can uh just press that camera icon and now you have control of that camera again uh, now that we're done with the sequencer, we're going to make a trigger, which the player walks in, and then it's going to trigger the cutscene. So, you just want to go to your content browser, create basic asset, blueprint class, and then we're going to create an actor. This will be our cutscene trigger, right? Now you can just open that. Now when you're in the cutscene trigger, you want to go to the components tab and add a new box. Collision. Uh, you don't have to worry about the size now, you can adjust it in the uh, level. So then you want to go to your event graph. And the first thing is you want to go to your event begin play. So then you want to go and say play level, or create level sequence player. Um, and this will be the thing that actually makes the cutscene for our level. So you want to take this level sequence and promote it to a variable. So we can move this anywhere in the scene and use different types of cutscenes where we want. And this return value, you also want to promote this to a variable because uh, this will actually be the thing that plays the cutscene. Uh, so you want to name it cutscene. And now you want to go to your 
box under the components tab just scroll down to the bottom so you see the events tab there'll be this one called on component begin overlap just press plus down and we'll create this new node this other actor will actually use to verify if the person in the box is actually a player so the way we're going to do this is by left clicking with b you can actually create a branch mode extremely helpful so you can just drag the execution pin to the branch node and then you want to take this condition drag it off and make a new equal operator just move this on um, and we want to make sure our other actor is equal to our get player character and the reason why we want to also compare to the player character is uh, we actually want to uh, disable the player input. So that's also pretty uh, important. So when we've confirmed that this is the player, we want to make a do once node. The reason is we only want the cutscene to play once in the trigger and never play again. So if we verify that the person's actually who he says he is, or actually the player, you just drag this other actor and uh, turn it into a variable. Now you can just drag this other actor out to here. And you can just uh, left click on the node lines just to rearrange it but so it looks cleaner. Um, now that we have the other actor, we can actually start playing our cutscene, which is pretty cool. So you can go to the variables tab, drag out the cutscene, get cutscene. And then you can create a new play node. Um, and this will be the thing that plays the cutscene. And now the cutscene will actually play. Uh, there's one problem though. If we want to add our code for... Oh, I've got something, yeah. Uh, before you want to even play the cutscene, you want to go and create a disable input. A node and this will disable the player's input so you want to drag the other actor into the target this player controller you want to use get player controller so it would disable the player's uh, input when he gets to the trigger now the problem is is um, if we actually go and create a cutscene get cutscene and then use a play node um, when we're done playing the cutscene, the player won't be able to move again, which is not too good. So you also want to take this cutscene variable and you want to drag off that uh, get duration. So this return value, we're going to uh, split it, uh, not promote, we want to split the return value and then we want to split both these struct pins. So what we want to do is we want to take the return value flame, uh, frame value and divide it by return value frame rate numerator, which will give us the time of the cutscene. So then we also want to uh, event by, yeah, set timer by event. So we can use a enable input uh, uh event when the cutscene's finished. So at the end of this uh, divider, you want to right click on that shock pin and convert it to a float. And then you want to drag that into the time. And now this event delegate, we're actually going to use to call the event. So what you want to do is go to the bottom here, right click, uh, create, add custom event. Yeah. And this will be our player in put enable now we want to take our other actor and then we want to use enable input um, and then we also want to grab our player controller again by using get player controller perfect and now we want to plug this event delegate into the player input enable delegate and before we actually go test all these stuff out, we want to go to our left, bottom left, to the variables tab. And then this weird half looking icon, uh, you want to click that to make your variable public. 
which means every instance of this is editable, which means every single trigger we put on the level can play a different cutscene. Now, I think we're ready to just go and test this, so just compile. And then save. Go to your showcase. And uh, what you can do now is you can actually just hit play. And it should work. So, uh... <laughs> Funny story is I kind of forgot that we actually didn't put a trigger into the level. So you just want to go to your content browser, just drag out the cutscene trigger. And then here at the right side at the level sequence, you want to change this to the cutscene you created. Then just press E on, oh, on your keyboard to scale the trigger to fit the wall better. And now when we hit play, you should see. Yeah, the cutscene plays, and when we're done with the cutscene, it goes back to our control, and we can't trigger the cutscene ever again, which is pretty cool. Um, now, if you were pretty observant, you might have noticed that the cutscene had black bars. So, to fix that, you want to go to your cinematics, and go to cutscene, and then you want to click on the center camera, and then you want to go, and you want to... Change the phone back full frame to, uh, ah, you just want to turn off constrain aspect ratio, yeah. Um, and then you're ready to go. So if, uh, we hit play now, yeah, it's gonna play full frame no matter what. And yeah, that's about everything you need to know for this. Um, you can get really creative, you can animate a couple stuff with this in the timeline. You can add another track and animate stuff. You can really make cool stuff with this. So um, I'm really hyped to see what you guys can actually make with this. Um, so, But without further ado, uh, thanks for watching the video. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit a like if you like the video. Hit this like if you don't really like the video. Um, and good night, everybody.